Good afternoon. This is the ninth day of January 2014. You are in time for KTN News Desk, where news is brought to you as it happens. My name is Bonnie Tunia. And mine is Edith Kimani. Let's have a look at what we've prepared for you this afternoon. Make it a seven-figure pay. Mau Mau Governing Council says compensation by UK government not enough. Night travel ban. Bus owners in court making a case against the night travel ban. Also in this bulletin, picking up the pieces, Nakumat compensated for losses incurred during Westgate siege. Welcome to the program. Cabinet Secretary for Interior and Coordination of National Government, Joseph Olelenku, has sounded a stern warning to refugees living in the Dab refugee camp. Olelenku says that if the refugees continue to pose a threat to national security, then the Kenyan government will take over and fast track the repatriation process. The Cabinet Secretary was speaking in relation to a recent incident where a police vehicle ran over an imp improvised explosive device in the Dab. I want to sound a warning that uh, uh, the refugees cannot be allowed to harbor criminals. And therefore, uh, as a reciprocity to our kind gesture of hosting them, they must also help us to make sure that they identify those in their midst that are perpetrating uh, criminal activities. Uh, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, uh, uh, the government of Kenya, uh, the government of the Federal Republic of Somalia have a duty to make sure that uh, the repatriation exercise is fast track. Otherwise, uh, uh, we will take it upon ourselves to fast track it if it will continue to pose a, a threat to national security. So I want to sound that warning that we cannot allow uh, 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 criminals to operate uh, in the refugee camps, but the refugees and UNHCR have a duty uh, to support our security agencies to identify those who are perpetrating these crimes. The Mau Mau Governing Council now says the amount paid by the British government to Mau Mau fighters was inadequate, citing cases where a person who was detained in London was paid over 7 million shillings. The council chairman urged Britain to adequately compensate survivors of the conflict. The council wants all survivors to receive just over a million shillings, up from the 300,000 shillings that Mau Mau war veterans received last year. No agenda to your no better, no better, no better, no better, no better, no better, we want the whole world to note that Kenya shillings 340,000 was not adequate compensation. We found a document from London that shows a recent case where a Ugandan and a West African in London was compensated for illegal detention for only 30 days. The award was Kenya shillings 7.6 million or British pounds 57,000. This meeting which calls for greater relationship between the Mau Mau, the former home guards, British, Britain and friends seek to urge our government, good government, to come to the final solution peacefully. Let's have a look at what's happening in central Kenya. And the Nyeri County government says it will now consider engaging other providers of pharmaceuticals and medical equipment directly to compete with the Kenya Medical Supplies Agency, which you may know as KEMSA. Speaking at the, cons uh, at the Consolata Madari Hospital in Nyeri, Nyeri Governor Derito Gashagwa was of the view that KEMSA should compete directly with other suppliers so as to break the monotony and enable the services to be cost effective. The Nyeri County Executive 
executive in charge of health, Dr. Charles Gedenji, said that single sourcing from Kemsa was a challenge, especially now that health services are supposed to be under the county government. And it was crucial to find uh, a way to offer quality services at affordable prices. At the same time, Madari Hospital has said that it will not sign a contract with the National Health and uh, Insurance Fund owing to a 13 million shilling debt loss incurred last year. The hospital, as at the moment, is not uh, providing service uh, to the civil servants uh, as we were not able to sign the contract, the 2013-2014 contract, as it was uh, drafted by NHIF and authorities. The reason being that in the previous contract, the hospital incurred unfavorably we do not intend to lock out Kemsa. However, now as we do procurement in the county level, we also need to abide to the uh, procurement regulations. Uh, we do not want to find ourselves doing secret sourcing. We are saying, and we have said it before, that Kemsa must compete with other suppliers in terms of providing medicine and equipment and other related uh, you know issues in terms of health uh, it is not going to be what was there before where government institutions would just routinely acquire items from KEMSA irrespective of how much they cost therefore we are saying yes we will use KEMSA where they are cost effective where the prices are lower and the quality is good we will interest other suppliers and that way we are able to ensure that more and more people are able to afford and access health services in the county of Nyeri and not just Nyeri I think this is something across the 47 counties that we are saying that uh, yes KEMSA is there it's good it's a government institution but it has to compete with other suppliers in terms of uh, medicine and other uh, issues great parents teachers and pupils brought down a house that was built on land that is believed to belong to the mountain primary school in thicker town kiambu county the house was among three others which have been built on plots that were allegedly grabbed by developers and landless in the landless estate the demolition took place after locals accused a county planning official of colluding with grabbers to relocate public utility land in the area residents complained that the town planner had hived off all the public land that had been set aside for schools and churches the estate association chairman displayed a new map for the area which he says was being used by an official based in the thicker sub county offices to approve illegal acquired plots the area member of parliament sounded a warning to corrupt government officials in the constituency and asked members of the public to register their complaints with her office katika kiambu county kunatakiwa all landing buying company zikigawa shamba zikikata ziki kata mashamba zikipatia watu zinafunjwa kwa sababu wale watu wanafanya hii ukora ni wale watu waligawa shamba ikaisha alafu wakaona kuna kitu kama shule ilibaki wanataka kukatakata i have told them anybody in the constituency who has a complaint with the town planner to come to my office so that we can compile the irregularities he has done and we don't he need to be fired actually he need to be arrested members of the nakuru martial arts club today held demonstrations within the town protesting against alleged brutal murder of one of their members who was found dead on new year's eve the group carried the casket containing the body of the deceased along the streets of nakuru town bringing most businesses to a standstill 25 year old victor andai is alleged to have been killed by a gang at around 6 a.m along the city streets as he was jogging the gang is alleged to have stabbed him several times in the neck before snatching his cell phone led by the club captain moses noor the protesters wielding placards and twigs accused the police of corruption and laxity the uh, confirming the incident nakuru ocpd bernard kiyoko said police officers are conducting investigations uh, in the incident
na alikuwa very promising boxer so tunasikitika kwa kupoteza mtu mwenye tuko tunatarajia angekuja kuisaidia nchi yetu hata ile teme dali mingi sana sasa tunaomba serikali kwa sababu ya, ya shida kama hii ambayo imetokea insecurity tunaomba watu ambao wanahusika wa county ya Nakuru waweze kuangalia shida hizi zinatokea wapi na waweze kuzuia kwa sababu hata sisi tunasikia mbaya kwa sababu watu wenye wamemuua ni watu ambao wanajulikana na ni watu ambao wako tu kati yetu sasa tunaomba serikali ikaweza kutusaidia Three thugs in Nyeri escaped death narrowly after an irate mob stoned them for almost an hour. The thugs who had duped them, Pesa attended into sending them money, were caught after their second attempt was thwarted. The three men had posed as customers at the M Pesa shop and allegedly sent money to a wrong person. A man later demanded to speak to the customer care for transaction to be reversed. However, the customer care agent who was giving instructions was a fake and had pretended to have reversed the transaction of 50 thousand shillings to the Empress account of one of the suspects. However, they were nabbed as they tried to pull the, some, the same trick to another Empress shop. An angry mob descended on the thugs, but one of them managed to escape. They spent the night at the Nyeri police station and were arraigned in court this morning. They're the same, the, the phone that we have, which the, 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 the first incident, he left a, a phone. Then the, the message in, in, in that phone corresponds to the name of the, one of the suspects. I can tell you, I'm going to call the customer na agent. So I'm going to agent, I'm going to call the agent. I'm going to call the agent, I'm going to call the agent, I'm going to understand that story uh, the heads are complex <laughs> so you dupe the agent and you also pretend to be there I don't know I don't think we want to explain how it works okay. uh, kind of like teaching people how to make a bomb but the end of that story is that they were arrested and one of them okay, managed to the end is explosive all right <laughs> Let's have a look at what's happening in Kurasoi, uh, where over 3,000 families which have uh, settled at the Chepakundi Settlement Scheme in Kurasoi will soon know their fate after the chairman of the National Land Commission paid a visit to the scheme. The commission is now weighing between converting the land back to a forest land or allowing those living on the land to settle permanently. Locals at the settlement scheme were hard hit during the 1992 clashes that forced a section of them to flee the area. There should be checks and balances to monitor spending by county governments and ensure that the governors do not misuse public funds. This is according to the Kiani Member of Parliament, Kanini Kega, who spoke in his constituency while commissioning a three-kilometer road uh, that has been constructed by youth and women groups. The legislators uh, poked holes on a, into a report recently released that shows that only 7% of the funds dispersed to the county governments were utilized, yet at least 30% of the money should have been used for development projects. According to the report, Nyeri County used the minimum 30% of the resources it received. The MP said he will, be, uh, he will support a bill tabled by Nandi Senator Stephen Sang to form county development boards headed by senators, saying this will ensure that the funds dispersed to the counties will indeed be used effectively. I mean, there is no way. This is uh, taxpayers' money. We have to uh, have a board 
or a body that you'll be able to regulate. At the moment, they are not answerable to anyone. Uh, we have seen that uh, in, in some cases whereby the, the counties uh, were supposed, of course, to come up with a budget which was to be approved, and at least 30% should have gone to um, development. We have seen that it is 8%. So there was an anomaly in the first place. The control of budget should not have even accepted those budgets in the, in the first place. Remember that Nyeri County is the only county which, according to that re report, uh, spent at least 30% of its funds on development. And for more details on this, the story is on www.standardmedia.co.ke. Right, and it will be interesting to let us know what you feel about how your governor spent your money. The handle is at KTN News Desk. We'll be glad to engage with you on that. To other matters now, and the Ford Kenya party has become weak due to bad leadership at the national executive level. This, according to founding member uh, of the party, Felix Medwaho, who spoke to KTN in Kisumu. Now, the member said there is need to reshuffle and recruit new members to strengthen the party. Adding there is also need to change the structure of the party leadership for it to have a more national representation. The party founding member insists the party should hold grassroots elections as soon as members who defected to other parties are replaced, and he says that should happen immediately. Now, Ford Kenya has not produced a presidential candidate since the year 2007. We have never been recognized. We are being treated as underdogs as a result of poor leadership in the party. We don't have a strategic leadership as at now. It is the last election was done three and a half years back. We have leaders who can defect anytime, come back anytime, defect anytime. But we want leaders who started this party. Those who started this party are the vision holders of this party. Welcome back. Nakumat Holdings has received 600 million shillings second tranche claim settlement for losses incurred at the Westgate shopping mall. This second installment brings the total money paid to Nakumat to 1 billion shillings from Mayfair Insurance. Nakumat, which was the anchor tenant at Westgate, however, says the settlement is well below the estimated 3 billion shillings loss suffered at the mall following the September 21st terror attack. The payment uh, to the retail chain covers damage to stock infrastructure as well as part payment for business interruption. For Nakumat, the settlement puts well on the path of recovery. It expects to use the money to set up the temporary store at Westgate in the next six months as part of the shopping mall's recovery plan. When Mayfair says that they're covering our stock covers fully, not that they're fully, but for the amount of covers that we had, which was at about 60% of the value of anything that we had we were covered for whether it was stocks or whether it was furniture fixtures or whether it was loss of business or anything in terms of the staff uh, compensation unfortunately we lost three or four of our colleagues uh, yes we are doing what it takes to make sure that their families and uh, their siblings are all settled well we will do what it takes uh, unfortunately there was no cover for any of those from the covers that we had uh, yes, all our staffs are covered under uh, life insurance covers and medical covers and all that, but this was something unforeseen, a terrorist attack uh, happening in Kenya is something that we did not believe it would ever happen. Other field regional leaders are meeting in Chad to discuss the future of the Central African Republic interim president Michel Jotodia. In a bid to end the sectarian violence ripping the country apart, Jotodia is expected to face pressure to step down over his failure to quell violence between Christians and Muslim militias in his country. However, the CAR official, officials say his resignation is not on the agenda at the summit. Earlier, the country's communications minister rejected any talk of Jotodia's departure, saying it would only worsen the crisis. CR sank into chaos when rebels from the Seleka movement launched a coup in March and installed Jotodia as the country's first Muslim president. Jotodia has since officially disbanded the rebels, but has proved unable to keep them in check. More than a thousand people have been killed in the past month alone and nearly a million displaced since the coup. It's time to wind up this edition of KTN News Desk. Did you know fact? Do you want to hear about t-shirts? Do you want to hear about balding? Or do you want to hear about some Japanese swordsman? Um, t 
T-shirts is closed. T-shirts? Yes. Did you know? Of course, I'm not balding anytime soon. I just needed to throw that in. T-shirts. Did you know? The T-shirt was invented in 1904 and was marketed to people like Tunya who couldn't sew or replace buttons. My name is Edith Kimani. Good afternoon. I never thought they were invented. What do you mean? You think they just appeared? It's Out of like, nowhere? Like the T-shirt was invented, you know? Everything. Right. Oh, my goodness. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> Have a good afternoon. <laughs> my name is Bonnie Tunya.